Bloodied and broken, Cygnus lay in the rubble, gasping her final breaths. Just another Benzite casualty in the war against the Grolak invaders. Her own troops had left her for dead in their desperate retreat. She was utterly alone, abandoned, her life fading away, until a human found her. Christian Bennett, an earthling explorer, had crash-landed on Xyloth, seeking repairs. He never expected to stumble upon a lone, wounded alien on the war-torn battlefield. A Benzite female named Cygnus, barely clinging to life. Old hostilities urged him to leave this stranger to her fate. Benzites saw humans as violent brutes, no better than the Grolax. But seeing her lying there, deserted by her own kind, Christian's heart called him to a higher purpose. He knew nothing of their medicines, but basic aid was universal. Christian brought Cygnus to his damaged ship, the Odyssey. With his scant supplies, he cleaned and bound her wounds, keeping vigil until she woke. Her reaction was far from grateful. Release me, human filth! Cygnus spat, struggling against the restraints holding her for treatment. I won't be your prisoner. Christian raised his hands in a calming gesture. You're not a captive. I'm trying to help. Spare me your lies, she hissed. I know you're kind. Savage conquerors like the Grolax. You just want me alive so you can interrogate me. That's not true. I only want to... An alarm blared, cutting Christian off. The ship's sensors had detected an energy signature. Grolax scouts, investigating the Odyssey's crash site. They'd be upon them in minutes. Christian raced to the helm, firing up the damaged engines. They sputtered and whined in protest. He had to get airborne immediately or they'd both be captured or killed. But the Odyssey was in no shape for a fight. Running was their only chance. As the ship lurched into the sky, Grolak fighters screamed after them, lasers flashing past the viewports. Christian jinked and juked, hands flying across the controls. The Odyssey groaned around them, parts shaking loose under the strain. One solid hit, and they'd be space dust. Cygnus watched the human work, muscles tensing with each near miss. His flying was masterful, impossibly precise for such a crippled vessel. A few sharp rolls and he slipped them into a narrow canyon, where the bulky Grolak ships couldn't follow. Christian had just saved both their lives. I suppose I should thank you, Cygnus acknowledged stiffly as they broke orbit. Perhaps you humans aren't all ruthless brutes. Glad you noticed, Christian replied wryly. Look, neither of us will survive long in Grolak space alone. I propose a truce until we're safe. Deal? He held out a hand. Cygnus hesitated, then reached out to shake it. She had no love for humans. But she had to admit, Christian was cut from a different cloth than the Grolak savages. Maybe there was more to his species than the Benzites believed. Tentatively, she decided to give him a chance. For now, survival had to take priority. She and this human were the only inhabitants of this tiny ship, lost in the void, Two souls united by circumstance against a hostile galaxy. If they couldn't learn to trust each other, they'd just be more casualties in the Grolak War. More deaths that wouldn't matter. That... But maybe, if they worked together, they could find a way to fight back against the darkness, slowly smothering the stars. That was the only worthwhile course. For in this story, set against the grim tapestry of galactic conflict... Two unlikely allies learning to overcome their differences might end up being the only thing that really changes the universe. As the Odyssey drifted through the void, its hull riddled with scorch marks and leaking atmosphere, Cygnus sat in the co-pilot's seat, her legs shaking from the weight of her newly discovered royal heritage. The responsibility of her people's fate pressed down on her like a physical burden, threatening to crush her beneath its immensity. Christian, noticing her distress, reached out and placed a hand on her shoulder. Hey, we'll figure this out together. You're not alone in this. Cygnus met his gaze, seeing the sincerity in his eyes. She nodded, drawing strength from his support. Thank you, Christian, but right now, we need to focus on getting the Odyssey repaired. We won't be able to help anyone if we're stranded out here. Christian leaned back in his seat, 
running a hand through his hair. I might know someone who can help us. An old friend of mine, Ash. He's a smuggler. Operates out of a spaceport on the edge of the Corva system. If anyone can get us the parts we need, it's him. Cygnus raised an eyebrow. A smuggler. Can we trust him? Ash may be a bit rough around the edges, but he's always come through for me in the past. We don't have many other options right now. With a sigh, Cygnus acquiesced, and Christian set a course for the Corva system. As they approached the spaceport, a hive of ramshackle structures clinging to a barren asteroid, Christian tried hailing Ash on their comms, but received no response. Docking the Odyssey, they ventured into the seedy underbelly of the port, Christian leading the way to Ash's usual haunt. The bar was a dingy, smoke-filled den, packed with all manner of unsavory characters. Christian approached the bartender, a grizzled, four-armed alien. I'm looking for Ash. Seen him around lately? The bartender shook his head. Ash hasn't been here in days. Word is he crossed Vorlock, the local crime lord. No one's heard from him since. Christian's face darkened. He turned to Cygnus and the handful of Benzite refugees who had accompanied them. Looks like we're going to have to mount a rescue mission. They spent the next few hours gathering intel on Vorlock's stronghold and his forces. Christian used his connections to secure a layout of the compound, while Cygnus strategized with the Benzite warriors, formulating a plan of attack. Under the cover of darkness, they infiltrated the stronghold, Christian's cunning, and Cygnus's tactical expertise, allowing them to slip past the outer defenses. Inside, they faced off against Vorlock's thugs and mercenaries. Christian's resourcefulness and Cygnus's warrior skills proving a formidable combination. They fought their way to the detention level where they found Ash, bruised and battered but alive. As they freed him, Vorlock himself appeared, flanked by a contingent of heavily armed guards. Well, well, what do we have here? The famous Christian Bennett, come to rescue his little smuggler friend. Christian stepped forward, placing himself between Vorlock and the others. It's over, Vorlock. Let us go, and no one else needs to get hurt. Vorlock laughed, a cruel grating sound. Oh, I don't think so. You see, I've been working with some new friends. Benzites, who believe that the only way to survive is to join the winning side. He gestured, and a figure emerged from the shadows. Cygnus gasped in recognition. Zekron, what are you doing here? Zekron, a battle-scarred Benzite with a coldly calculating gaze, smiled thinly. Isn't it obvious, princess? I'm doing what needs to be done to save our people. The Grolax are too powerful. We can't hope to defeat them alone. But if we ally with them, share our technology, we can ensure our survival. Cygnus shook her head in disbelief. You're betraying everything our people stand for. We can't trust the Grolax. Zekrin took a step closer, his voice low and persuasive. Think about it, Cygnus. Your human friend here. Do you really believe he cares about the fate of the Benzites? That your people will ever accept him as an ally? Join me, and together we can lead our people to a new future. Cygnus hesitated, torn between her growing trust in Christian and her duty to her people. But in that moment of indecision, Zekrin lunged forward, a hidden blade sliding from his sleeve, aimed directly at Cygnus's heart. Christian reacted on instinct, throwing himself between them. The blade sank deep into his chest and he collapsed to the ground, blood pooling beneath him. Cygnus cried out in anguish, dropping to her knees beside him. In that instant, seeing Christian's selfless sacrifice, she knew where her true loyalties lay. She rose to her feet, eyes blazing with righteous fury. Zekrin, you are a traitor to our people. You have betrayed everything we stand for, and I will not let you lead us down this path of destruction. She turned to the Benzite refugees who had watched the exchange in shocked silence. My fellow Benzites, this human, Christian Bennett, has proven himself a true friend and ally. He has fought beside us, bled for us, and now he has sacrificed himself for me. For all of us, if we are to have any hope of surviving this war, we must stand together, not sell our souls to the very enemy that seeks to destroy us. Inspired by her words, the Benzites rallied around her, turning on Zekrin and his followers. In the chaos of the battle that followed, Christian, Cygnus, 
Ash and the refugees managed to fight their way out of the stronghold, making a harrowing escape back to the Odyssey. As they fled the Corva system, Cygnus tended to Christian's wounds, her heart heavy with the knowledge of Zekrin's betrayal and the growing threat of the grolak benzite alliance. She knew that their struggle was far from finished, that she would need to find a way to unite her fractured people and forge new alliances if they were to have any hope of victory. But for now, her focus was on Christian. As he lay recovering in the Odyssey's medbay, Cygnus kept a constant vigil at his side, reflecting on how much had changed between them since their first meeting. The human who had once been just another enemy, another obstacle in her path, had become something else entirely. A friend, an ally, and perhaps something more. As Christian stirred, his eyes fluttering open to meet hers, Cygnus felt a surge of emotion well up inside her. There would be time later to figure out what this bond between them meant, to navigate the complexities of their growing feelings for each other. For now, she was simply grateful to have him alive, to know that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. And so, as the Odyssey charted a course for their next destination, Christian and Cygnus began to plan their next move, their shared experiences and sacrifices having forged an unbreakable connection between them. The road ahead was uncertain, fraught with danger and hidden enemies, but they knew that as long as they had each other, they stood a fighting chance. For in the end, it was the strength of their bond, the power of their unity in the face of overwhelming odds, that would be the key to saving not just the Benzites, but the entire galaxy from the looming darkness of the Grolak threat. The Odyssey limped through space, its hull pockmarked with blast marks. Inside, Christian wiped sweat from his brow as he tightened the last bolt on a makeshift repair. That should hold for now, he said, turning to Ash, but we need a proper overhaul. Ash nodded, his cybernetic eye whirring as he scanned the ship's systems. I know a guy who might be able to help. Ever heard of the Celestial Vanguard? Christian's eyebrows shot up. The rebel group. I thought they were just a myth. Oh, they're real all right, and they've got resources we could use. Cygnus joined them, her face etched with concern. Where do we find them? Ash grinned. That's the fun part. They're holed up in the Xandar Nebula. Christian cursed. The Xandar Nebula? That's a death trap. It's also our best shot, Cygnus said firmly. Plot a course, Christian. We're going in. The journey through the nebula was a nightmare. Radiation alarms blared constantly as Christian wrestled with the controls, narrowly avoiding ion storms that threatened to fry their systems. Hold on, Christian shouted as a massive gravitational force suddenly gripped the ship. A rogue black hole loomed ahead, its maw threatening to swallow them whole. Cygnus gripped her seat, nuchals tightening, as Christian pushed the engines to their limit. The Odyssey groaned and shuddered, metal screaming in protest as they fought against the black hole's pull. With a final burst from the thrusters, they broke free, the ship tumbling end over end before Christian regained control. But their troubles were nowhere near the end. In the cargo hold, Tensions among the Benzite refugees had reached a boiling point. You've doomed us all, Gracchus, a burly Benzite with cybernetic implants, roared at Cygnus. Allying with humans, chasing fairy tales, this isn't the Benzite way. Cygnus stood her ground. The old way is dead, Gracchus. We must adapt or perish. Then perish we shall, Gracchus lunged at Cygnus, a hidden blade flashing in his hand. Christian burst into the hold assessing the situation in an instant. He stepped between Cygnus and Gracchus, hands raised. Whoa, let's all take a breath here. Gracchus, I get it. You're scared, we all are. But this isn't the answer. Gracchus hesitated, his blade wavering. Christian pressed on, his voice calm but firm. Think about what you're doing. Is this really how you want to honor your people? By turning on each other when we need unity most? For a tense moment, no one moved. Then slowly, Gracchus lowered his weapon. Fine, he growled, but this isn't over. Cygnus watched the exchange, a new respect for Christian blooming in her chest. She stepped forward, addressing her people. Gracchus is right about one thing. This isn't over, 
But from this moment on, we move forward together. As your queen, I swear to lead us to a future worthy of our legacy. The Benzites murmured among themselves, but the fight had gone out of them. For now, at least, the crisis was averted. Days later, battered and weary, they finally reached the coordinates Ash had provided. Before them loomed a massive asteroid, its surface riddled with docking bays and defense turrets. Well, Christian said, a wry smile on his face, looks like we found the neighborhood. Now let's hope they don't shoot first and ask questions later. As they approached, a gruff voice crackled over the comms. Unidentified vessel, state your business or be destroyed. Christian took a deep breath. Here goes nothing, he muttered, then opened a channel. This is the Odyssey requesting permission to dock. We're here to join the fight against the Grolax. A tense silence followed. Then, proceed to docking bay 7. Any sudden moves and you'll be space dust. They landed without incident, but the welcome party that greeted them was far from friendly. Armed guards of various species surrounded them, weapons trained on the Odyssey's crew. A tall reptilian alien with scarred scales stepped forward. I am Korvath, leader of the Celestial Vanguard. Why should we trust you? Cygnus stepped forward, her head held high. Because we have a common enemy, and because I challenge you, Korvath, to ritual combat. If I win, you'll hear us out. If I lose, well, I won't lose. Korvath's eyes narrowed, then he let out a booming laugh. You've got spirit, I'll give you that. Very well, little queen. Let's see what you're made of. The onlookers formed a circle as Cygnus and Korvath faced off. Korvath towered over her, his muscled frame rippling with barely contained power. But Cygnus was quick, her movements fluid and precise. The fight was brutal. Korvath's blows shook the ground, but Cygnus danced around them, striking at his weak points with surgical precision. For every hit she took, she landed two of her own. Finally, with a lightning-fast sweep of her leg, Cygnus sent Korvath crashing to the ground. She stood over him, panting but victorious. Korvath looked up at her, respect glimmering in his eyes. Well fought, he rumbled. You've earned your audience, Queen Cygnus. Now let's talk about how we're going to bring the Grolax to their knees. As the Vanguard's leaders gathered to strategize, Christian caught Cygnus's eye. They shared a small smile, both knowing that this was just the beginning. The real fight was yet to come, but for the first time since their journey began, they had hope. Together, they would forge a plan to strike at the heart of their enemies and reclaim the stars. Christian paced the dimly lit war room, his eyes fixed on the holographic display of Ryloth Prime. We need to hit them where it hurts, he said, pointing to the pulsing red dot representing the secret weapons facility. Cygnus leaned in, her brow furrowed. Agreed, but how do we get past their defenses? Ash chuckled, a mischievous glint in his cybernetic eye. Simple. We become the very thing they're looking for. Arms dealers. The plan came together quickly. Ash's underworld contacts procured a shipment of decommissioned plasma cannons, perfect bait for their ruse. The team boarded a battered freighter, its hull scarred and paint peeling, the perfect disguise for would-be smugglers. As they approached Ryleth Prime, Christian's hands tightened on the controls. A Grolak patrol ship loomed ahead, its sensors probing their vessel. Unidentified freighter, state your business, a gruff voice crackled over the comms. Christian swallowed hard, adopting the swagger of a seasoned smuggler. Just some honest merchants looking to offload some merchandise. We hear there's good money to be made on Ryleth Prime. A tense silence followed. Then, proceed to docking bay three. Any deviation from your assigned flight path will result in immediate termination. They navigated through a treacherous asteroid field the ship groaning as Christian pushed it to its limits. Finally, they docked at the facility, a sprawling complex of stark metal and pulsing energy fields. Cygnus, disguised in grimy spacer's attire, led the way down the ramp. A squad of Zekron's guards met them, weapons raised. Let's see the goods, the lead guard growled. Christian popped open a crate, revealing the gleaming plasma cannons within. The guard's eyes widened with greed. 
Follow me, he said, leading them deeper into the facility. As they walked, Christian and Cygnus exchanged subtle glances, noting security checkpoints and potential escape routes. The manufacturing plant hummed with activity, churning out weapons of terrifying destructive power. We split up here, Christian whispered. You take the control center. I'll plant the charges. Cygnus nodded, her heart racing as she watched Christian disappear down a side corridor. She led her team towards the control center, every step fraught with danger. Suddenly, alarms blared. Intruders detected in Sector 7, a voice boomed over the intercom. Cygnus cursed. We've been made. Move! They sprinted down the hallway, blaster fire erupting around them. Two of her team fell, hit by enemy fire. Cygnus dove behind a console, returning fire as she frantically tried to reach Christian on the comms. Christian, abort! We've been compromised! Static was her only answer. In the manufacturing plant, Christian and his team found themselves pinned down by Zekrin's forces. Keep them busy! Christian shouted, making a mad dash to plant the final explosive. A stun blast caught him in the back, sending him crashing to the floor. As consciousness faded, he saw Zekron's sneering face looming over him. Cygnus fought her way to the control center, dispatching guards with ruthless efficiency. She burst into the command room, coming face to face with Zekron himself. Ah, the wayward queen, Zekron drawled. Come to join the winning side at last? Cygnus spat at his feet. Never! Pity, Zekron sighed, drawing his weapon. You could have ruled alongside me. Instead, you'll die here, along with your human pet. They clashed in a brutal duel, Cygnus's speed matching Zekrin's raw power. Just as Zekrin gained the upper hand, a familiar voice rang out. Hey, ugly, pick on someone your own size. Christian stood in the doorway, battered but alive. Together, they launched a furious assault on Zekrin. Christian landed a crushing blow, sending the traitor crumpling to the ground. The charges, Cygnus gasped. They raced to the control panel, inputting the detonation sequence. The facility rocked with explosions as they sprinted for their ship. As they lifted off, a transmission came through. It was the Mole, revealing his true allegiance and warning them of the Grolax impending retaliation against the Benzite refugees. Back at the Vanguard base, Christian and Cygnus stood side by side, watching the reports of devastation pour in. We have to do something, Cygnus said, her voice thick with emotion. Christian took her hand, squeezing it gently. We will. Together. Cygnus nodded, steel in her eyes. It's time to unite our people, all of them. The Grolax won a war. We'll give them one they'll never forget. The Odyssey touched down on the asteroid base, its hull still bearing scorch marks from their narrow escape. Christian and Cygnus strode down the ramp their faces flushed with the thrill of victory. The cavernous hangar bustled with activity as Vanguard members rushed to greet them. Their triumph was short-lived. Corvath approached, his reptilian features tight with concern. We have news, he said, his voice low. The Grolax. They've retaliated. Cygnus felt the blood drain from her face. What do you mean? Corvath led them to the command center where a holographic display showed the devastation. The Benzite refugee fleet, a collection of ramshackle ships carrying the last of her people, had been ambushed. Debris floated in the void where entire vessels once flew. Cygnus staggered, her legs nearly giving out. Christian steadied her, his hand firm on her arm. How many? She choked out. We're still assessing the damage, Corvath replied but early estimates suggest over half the fleet was lost. The weight of responsibility crashed down on Cygnus. She had led her people into this war, and now they were paying the price. Guilt and grief threatened to overwhelm her. Christian squeezed her shoulder. This isn't your fault, he said softly. Cygnus straightened, stealing herself. You're right, she said. It's the Grolax's fault, and they will pay. She strode to the communications array, her voice ringing out across the base and to the surviving Benzite ships. My people, she began, her tone filled with a newfound authority. We have suffered a grievous blow, but we are not defeated. The time has come to cast aside our differences 
to unite not just as Benzites, but as free beings of the galaxy. Cygnus's words echoed through the halls and across the stars. For too long we've allowed fear and mistrust to divide us. No more. Today we forge a new alliance. Human, Benzite, and all who yearn for freedom. We stand together against the Grolak menace. Christian stepped forward, his voice joining hers. The vanguard stands with you, he declared. And we're not alone. Across the galaxy others are rallying to our cause. Together, we will build an army the likes of which the Grolaks have never seen. As Christian spoke, screens lit up around them. Ships of various designs and origins appeared, their captains pledging support. A Phyroxian battlecruiser, its hull filled with weaponry, a sleek Andorian interceptor, even a massive Javorian carrier, capable of launching hundreds of fighters. Hope began to rise in Cygnus's chest. But as she turned to thank Christian, movement caught her eye. A group of vanguard soldiers, led by a towering figure with jet-black scales, stormed into the command center. Enough of this human-loving nonsense, the leader roared, his voice dripping with contempt. I am Cravax, and I speak for the true vanguard. We will not be led by alien queens and their pet humans. Chaos erupted. Loyal vanguard members clashed with Cravax's followers. Blaster fire filled the air, acrid smoke stinging Cygnus's eyes. Get down! Christian yelled, shoving Cygnus to the floor as an energy bolt sizzled overhead. They crawled behind a fallen console, hearts pounding. Ash appeared at their side, his cybernetic eye glowing red. We've got to get out of here, he hissed. Cravax has turned half the base against us. They made a break for it, ducking and weaving through the firefight. Christian provided covering fire, his shots precise and deadly. But as they neared the exit, Kravax himself loomed before them, a wicked blade in his hand. You've ruined everything, he snarled, lunging at Cygnus. Christian threw himself between them. There was a sickening sound of tearing flesh, and Christian crumpled to the ground. No, Cygnus screamed, dropping to her knees beside him. Blood seeped from a deep gash in his side. Ash grabbed her arm. We have to go now. Torn between her duty and her heart, Cygnus made her choice. She hoisted Christian's limp form over her shoulder, grunting with the effort. Lead the way, she said to Ash. They fled through twisting corridors, the sounds of battle echoing behind them. A small group of loyal vanguard members joined them, providing protection as they reached a waiting shuttle. As they lifted off, Cygnus cradled Christian's head in her lap. His breathing was shallow, his skin pale. She pressed a hand to his wound, trying to stem the bleeding. Stay with me, she whispered, her voice cracking. Please, Christian, I can't do this without you. The shuttle streaked away from the asteroid, carrying its battered occupants into the vast unknown of space. Cygnus looked down at Christian's face, then out at the stars beyond. She knew that the real fight was just beginning and the fate of the galactic realm hung in the balance. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.